High speeds, desperate suspects and innocent people caught in the middle. The dangers of police chases have led to officers being held to stricter policies than ever before. Still across the country every year, hundreds of people killed when police chase suspects who run from the law. Our investigative reporter Patrick Nelson in studio uncovering the damage from these dangerous chases in Pueblo in particular and uh, starting to add up for the cops here, Patrick. It's such an issue there that in some cases they're just letting the suspects go because it's not worth the risk. I just got updated numbers with five damaged cop cars so far this year. At least 26 Pueblo police vehicles were damaged in chases since 2016. It shows why officers everywhere have to answer for the choice to chase. September 2016 in Pueblo. Coming, going on, coming, going on, coming. Go straight. Okay, okay. Go. This is body cam video we acquired through an open records request. Officers are chasing a suspect driving a truck, fleeing an armed robbery. In a smoke filled scene with guns drawn, the chase comes to an end after officers force the truck off the road. The suspect in cuffs, a gun on the ground, and pockets full of cash. This was a chase with several dangerous moments caught on surveillance camera. Officers desperately tried to end this chase, but the driver with two others inside wouldn't stop, even as one passenger is thrown from the vehicle. With the suspect driving in reverse, other cars are hit too. Amazingly, nobody was seriously hurt in this wild chase. But Pueblo Police Chief Troy Davenport says it's an example of why so many law enforcement agencies hesitate to start a chase. We pursue less today, much less today than we, than we did in the past, uh, for obvious reasons. Um, most of them connected to safety. Three police vehicles were damaged in this one incident. Our investigation found these chases are taking a toll on Pueblo police vehicles. Between 2016 and 2018, 21 cruisers were damaged in car chases. We're trying to be wise with dollars by using parts from, from other vehicles that, that may have become incapacitated and were no longer safe to, to drive as, as police vehicles. Um, you know, having said that, um, it's a difficult atmosphere that we find ourselves in. Chief Davenport says because of the dangers, officers are now held to stricter policies and chasing less. But he believes suspects are running more. The, those folks that run from us, I think, run with more desperation. Uh, I, think they, uh, I think they do crazier things. Um, and. So we have to account for that. According to the latest National Highway Traffic Safety Administration numbers, 416 people were killed in police chases nationwide in 2017. 1,594 were killed between 2014 and 2017, an average of 399 a year or at least one person a day. Officers in Pueblo are training, hoping to stop this trend. The sooner we can get a pursuit stopped, the less danger there's going to be. Working with Sergeant Eric Gonzalez, I took part in a pit maneuver training exercise. Patrick, are you good driving that car? You feel confident doing that? Yes. The goal? Stolen? To safely see why Pueblo officers rely on the pit maneuver to end chases. It's a success. I'm unharmed, my vehicle is stalled, and now I'm surrounded by police. But the challenge for officers is getting the location and timing right to use this tactic. Plus, damage is often done to police vehicles in the process. You know, I want the officers to be cognizant of the potential damage to police cars, but I don't want that to be their primary decision-making process. It has to enter into there somewhere. I want them to make decisions based on what's the safest thing for the community, for themselves, and the suspect as well. In the Denver area, Arvada police are using a tool of their own. 
The Star Chase GPS tracker deploys a sticky dart on the back bumper of the suspect vehicle, allowing officers to track that suspect from a safe distance rather than engaging in a risky high-speed pursuit. The people that we're dealing with in these cases are usually people that are heavy or hardcore drug addicts. Uh, they are not in their right mind and we can't predict whether that car is going to pull over or not when we turn the lights on. Arvada Police Detective David Snelling says the investment in this technology has paid off. In 2018, 21 officers deployed 63 darts, resulting in 54 arrests. Aurora Police also use this technology and say so far this year, tracking darts helped recover 14 vehicles and led to 13 arrests. Is this a cost-effective tool? I think we'll have to weigh that out over many years. I think in the big picture, it's a small amount to pay for, for you know, just that comfort or that feeling that we may not have to chase a car. But in some cases, there is no avoiding the danger, like when a suspect stole a state patrol vehicle in the Pueblo area a few weeks ago. With traffic on the road, a high-speed chase started as the suspect drove down the highway. The suspect uh, sped up of speeds upwards of 100 miles an hour and on his own crashed our patrol car rolling it into the center median. The state patrol's $40,000 vehicle destroyed. Fortunately, no one was seriously hurt. Members of the Pueblo Police Department offered support to state patrol during the chase. Chief Davenport says it's another example of the tough decisions facing officers any time someone fails to stop for police. Sometimes Given the situation that officers are in, there just is no good answer. Uh, and it, 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 it's just a difficult process to, to go through. And for many police departments, the cost of the tracker technology is what prevents them from utilizing it. Cost esti estimates show it's roughly $5,000 per police car, and each GPS dart runs about $250 each. Officers who have it Tell me at this point, the benefits are outweighing the costs, but ultimately it's the taxpayers who must decide. Always watching out for you, Patrick Nelson, News 5 Investigates. Great report, Patrick. Thank